Hi, I'm Dr. Dwayne Wood from Diabetes and Endocrine Wellness Center and The Light Away in Huntsville, Alabama. I'm an endocrinologist and I treat patients who have hormonal dysfunction, but I'm also called a diabetes doctor because the majority of patients I see are patients who have diabetes mellitus, commonly called diabetes. Today I'm going to talk about hypothyroidism, what the thyroid is, how does it work, and how does it affect the body. And if you stick around until the end, I'll tell you how the thyroid causes weight gain and how much weight you can expect to lose should your hypothyroidism be treated. The thyroid is a butterfly-shaped gland that sits in the neck. In fact, if you imagine me with a bow tie, that's exactly where the thyroid would be. Part of it is below the collarbone and part of it is above the collarbone and it wraps around the neck. The thyroid is controlled by a pea-sized gland in the brain called the pituitary. The pituitary gives off a signal called TSH or thyroid stimulating hormone. That signal goes to the thyroid and tells the thyroid to release uh, T3 and T4. These go into the blood and they're converted to other forms, but collectively these are all called thyroid hormones. And these are the hormones that do all of the functions that we just discussed. The thyroid helps to regulate the use of energy in the body. So that means that it can be involved in things as varied as how fast your hair grows, how much weight you put on, how fast your heart goes, and even involved in your sex drive. So you can see that any kind of dysregulation in the thyroid can cause a myriad of symptoms in the body. Hypothyroidism, also called underactive thyroid, is a condition where the thyroid does not make enough hormone for the body's needs. With decreasing thyroid hormone, the body's functions begin to slow and people develop symptoms. They may find that their skin is a bit drier, their hair is a little coarser, and their thinking may not be as quick as they were before. Other symptoms would be depression, irregularities in menstrual cycles, fatigue, weight gain, bloating, coarse hair, brittle nails, and fertility problems. So you may be asking yourself, what causes hypothyroidism? And there are several causes. An autoimmune disease, it can come from surgical removal, uh, radiation treatment. Someone can be born with hypothyroidism. Certain medications can induce hypothyroidism. The most common cause in the United States is Hashimoto's thyroiditis, also known as chronic lymphocytic thyroiditis. It's an autoimmune disorder where the body's own systems begin destroying thyroid cells, resulting in too few cells to produce the thyroid hormones needed by the body. Currently, almost 5% of the people in the United States have hypothyroidism. Outside of the United States, the most common cause of hypothyroidism is iodine deficiency. Because hypothyroidism is an autoimmune disease, it tends to associate with other autoimmune diseases. So if someone has one autoimmune disease, the likelihood is that they may have another. So how is hypothyroidism diagnosed? In order to find out if you do have hypothyroidism, you would see your healthcare provider. They would do a thorough medical history, talk about the symptoms that you may be having, talk about family history, any medications that you're on, and then there are some blood tests that they would do, particularly the TSH or thyroid stimulating hormone as we discussed earlier, and uh, a free T4. If the thyroid stimulating hormone is high and the free T4 is low, which represents the hormone in your body, then you would have a diagnosis of hypothyroidism. Hypothyroidism is treated by replacing the hormone that the thyroid is unable to make. The goal is to get the thyroid levels back into the normal range and also to relieve the symptoms of hypothyroidism. This is called euthyroidism. The medication used to treat hypothyroidism is levothyroxine. It's typically taken once a day on an empty stomach with a recommendation that one waits between 30 minutes to one hour before taking any other medication or eating any food. 
When starting levothyroxine in our practice, we typically base it on a patient's age, their weight, their pregnancy status, and their functional ability. Once the medication is started, we typically have them repeat the blood work in four to six weeks. We see them back and then we discuss with them whether the symptoms are better and we look to see whether that thyroid hormone in the blood is back into the normal range. If their thyroid hormone is not in the normal range or their symptoms still persist, we will adjust their dose to try to achieve euthyroidism as we discussed before, which is getting the symptoms resolved and also getting the numbers into the normal range. There are some foods, supplements, and medications that can affect the absorption of levothyroxine and or affect the levels that we get when we check the blood. Some things that will affect the absorption would be calcium, iron supplementation, fiber, and some soy products. Some medications that can affect the levels would be estrogen, phenytoin, or sertraline. So I said I was going to tell you how the thyroid affects the metabolism and weight and how many pounds you can expect to lose should you have your thyroid treated. One of the major functions of the thyroid is to regulate metabolism. As the thyroid hormone decreases, the body's function slows, so does the metabolism, and a person's basal metabolic rate decreases. One of the things that happens is that the body begins to retain salt and water, and the person begins feeling bloated. They may have some puffiness in the hands, in the eyes, in the feet, and this can result in weight gain. So if someone has hypothyroidism and they have weight gain, treating their hypothyroidism should result in the resolution of that water weight, that puffiness, that bloating that they may feel. And there have been some places where we've seen about 10% of the body weight go down, but on average between 5 to 10 pounds can be expected should the thyroid be treated if the weight is a result of hypothyroidism. Why am I not losing weight and why is my weight increasing? As mentioned earlier, if the thyroid is being treated and one is euthyroid and other symptoms have resolved and this is the only symptom that's left, it's unlikely that this is due to hypothyroidism, particularly if the amount of weight that has been put on or that is increasing is beyond what's mentioned earlier. So things that we can do to try to improve the weight, one is exercise. Exercising is an excellent way of increasing the body's metabolism, particularly if you add strength training and begin developing some toned muscles. Toned muscles burn more calories than muscles that are not toned. Number two, manage your stress. During times of stress, the body releases hormones that can affect the weight. Cortisol also affects the thyroid hormone. Managing stress by exercising or meditation or some other form is a wonderful way of decreasing the hormones and also helping with weight. Next, get enough sleep get enough rest. We recommend about seven hours of sleep per night. During sleep, the body rejuvenates, the body regenerates, and it will help with weight. And then finally, eat a balanced diet, making sure that you're eating enough protein, enough green leafy vegetables, and foods that are packed with vitamins, minerals, and nutrients. These same practices are what we talk to our patients who are pre-diabetic or even our patients who are diabetic on how to improve their lifestyle, how to improve their weight. If you've not already done so, go ahead and look at our video called Pre-Diabetes, How to Avoid Getting Diabetes. We'll put a card above and the link will be below. This is Dr. Dwayne Wood from Diabetes and Endocrine Wellness Center and The Light Away, educating the public for a better you.